Welcome to In the Desert of Set, a pagan and occult website by G.B. Marion. I'm G.B. Marion. I write about life as a polytheist in contemporary times with random, long-winded detours into ancient history, classic horror movies, and all kinds of other fun stuff. Won't you join me for today's adventure? If you'd like to read a free electronic print copy of the following recording, please visit desertofset.com. On the Temple of Set The Temple of Set was founded by Michael Aquino, a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. military, in 1975. This was the result of a schism within the Church of Satan, in which Aquino had been a high-ranking member. Aquino had some major philosophical and administrative differences with the church's founder, Anton LaVey, especially when it came to the theological existence of the devil. LaVeyan Satanists are not theistic devil worshippers, but scientific materialists who just happen to share a taste for gothic theatricality. And why not? Goth stuff is sexy. But in 1975, some members of the church started to believe a real supernatural force was somehow attending their rituals, and Anton LaVey eventually made it clear that such views just weren't welcome in his outfit. So Aquino left and performed a rite of his own to invoke the devil and figure out what to do next. He was answered not by any biblical concept of Satan, but by the Egyptian god Set, who impressed upon Aquino the concept of Kepper, spelled with the Greek letter Chi, so it looks like it begins with the letter X in Temple of Set literature. Aquino then founded the temple, which is still the most publicly well-known Setian community today. Aquino's Setianism requires some explanation. Reconstructing a Neo-Egyptian faith was never really his intent. His philosophy really begins with a refutation of Levian materialism, and not with any comedic groundwork. Aquino was reacting to Levay's teaching that human beings are just organic meat machines that cease to exist upon death. He argues that human intelligence is supernatural by its very definition, and that it can indeed survive the shedding of its mortal coil. Aquino drew more of his inspiration from Gnosticism, Neoplatonism, Thelema, and Levey than he did from actual Egyptian sources. And while he does acknowledge Set as a real being, he has never condoned venerating him. Temple of Set members prioritize Kepper, the evolution of their souls or psyches, to become gods after death. Like Levian Satanists, they seem to look down upon devotional religion of any sort, even when it is directed towards Set. They claim that submission to any external deity will lead to total dissolution of the soul in the afterlife. As such, Setians of the Temple of Set are not worshippers of an Egyptian god per se, just as Church of Satan members aren't devil worshippers but something more like Gnostics, Thelemites, or Satanists who just happen to dig set. They approach the Red Lord from a completely different playing field than Kemetic-based traditions do. Our faiths are rooted in Egyptology, while theirs is rooted in Western ceremonial magic. I am occasionally asked if I am a Temple of Set affiliate. The answer is no, and I never have been. While I have a great deal of respect for the temple and many of their publications, I determined a long time ago, when I was 18 in fact, that this organization would not be a good fit for me personally. I identify as a Setian first and foremost because I love Set and want to honor him as much as I can in this life. I find it annoying when left-hand path occultists conflate all devotional religion with submission and self-denial, since this conveniently ignores the fact that historical Setians like Apeti and Ramses II clearly worshipped Set. I resent the suggestion that ancient Setians didn't understand Set as well as we do today. That is some major white colonialist bullshit right there. 
And I have never trusted religious organizations that charge annual membership fees or that possess rigid hierarchies. I understand things can't get done without regular funding and that all churches require good administrative leadership if they are to succeed. But I don't think anyone should have to pay any money or kiss any hiney to learn about Big Red. I've interacted with some junior temple members, who are often identified within the organization as Setians of the first degree, and who insisted I couldn't possibly have any authentic standing with Set without joining the temple and learning all the secret things they keep from the public. I realize these individuals weren't speaking for the temple's priesthood, but in my experience, such cliquish attitudes tend to trickle down from the top, and if people can't reach out to Set and be answered by him without the temple's guidance, how the fuck did people worship him in ancient Egypt? What do these people have that the Egyptians didn't, and which the rest of us can't find by visiting any museum or public library? It's one thing for homegrown witch covens to keep some of their lore and rituals private, so as to prevent these things that are sacred to them from being appropriated by outsiders. It's quite another matter for organized, incorporated, tax-exempt churches to claim they hold cosmic secrets one can only learn by paying regular dues. So even as a young Typhonian foal, I saw little point in trying to join. In Temple of Set literature, Set is often defined as the platonic form or principle of isolate intelligence, a non-natural alien entity that somehow modified the DNA of our primate ancestors so we would evolve to have individual psyches or souls. It gets even more complicated from there. This has little to do with anything the ancient Egyptians believed, and that has always been a major turnoff for me. I am a pagan. For me, Set is a part of nature, not something that exists apart from or in opposition to it. The latter idea is a little too close to clefothic anti-cosmicism for my interest, and this is only reinforced by all the temple literature I've seen that poo-poos paganism. Mind you, I don't believe Set even recognizes words like heresy or blasphemy, so disagreeing with someone else's Setian theology is not really a big deal. I can think your understanding of Set is totally batshit while still accepting you as a fellow Setian. Yet I am a proud animist and devotional polytheist, and if you tell me you think worshipping nature is ignorant or backward, I'm going to question why you align yourself with a pagan god in the first place. But just as I can appreciate Anton LaVey without agreeing with everything he ever said, so too can I appreciate Michael Aquino. He used his professional reputation to help see that minority religions are better represented among the U.S. armed forces, and he was at the front lines when it came to fighting the satanic panic during the 1980s. He is somewhat infamous for being so fascinated with Nazi history, but he just writes about how Nazi occult rituals were perversions of Norse polytheism, which is absolutely true, as any heathen can verify. I have never seen Aquino praise Hitler, promote fascism, deny the Holocaust, call for the extermination of Israel, or anything that Nazis actually do. Plus, he's a veteran, and some vets are just really into certain areas of military history that make people uncomfortable in polite conversation. I'm sure the man ain't perfect, but it means a lot to me that someone like Aquino was there to raise awareness about Set back in the day. Even though I disagree with some of his opinions, anyone who has learned about Set from me should know that learning about Aquino is what catalyzed my own conversion in 1997. Even Zena Shrek, the youngest daughter of Anton LaVey, eventually left the Church of Satan and joined the Temple of Set for a while. Then she left that as well and started her own project, the Sethian Liberation Movement. Remember that Shrek is the first person on record to have been raised a Satanist from birth. She ditched her father's Satanism, but she came to Set instead of coming to Jesus, you might say, and she identifies as a Buddhist, too. The idea that this forgotten Egyptian god would steal people away from Satan's black pope, including his own daughter, and inspire them to be Setians instead has always been especially meaningful to me. 
Shrek is not the only former Temple member to continue walking with Set in her own unique direction, either. Some have become comedics or devotional polytheists, and as I mentioned, even those of us in the LV-426 tradition have benefited from Aquino's work. So while I have about as much interest in the Temple of Set as they probably do in me, I believe Big Red really did answer Aquino's call to the devil on that dark night in 1975, and I'm quite grateful he did. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this sermon, and you'd like to read some more, please check out desertofset.com. I hope you have a wonderful day. Set bless.